Internet security. This is going to cover how to protect the computer and you, the user, from threats that you find on the internet. And we're going to take a look at hackers slash crackers hardening the computers as well as malware. We're going to have a separate video just on malware alone. That's going to be kind of interesting. Malware, just a little bit of a uh, preview, is viruses, worms, bad stuff like that. Before we begin, let's figure out who the players are. Who are the bad guys here? Now, you might have heard of Hackers. By the way, great movie. Um, one of my favorite movies from back in the day. Definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it. And an amazing soundtrack. Okay, I digress. But Hackers. These aren't the bad guys. Hackers are people who push technology beyond the limits. They are curious. They push technology. They try new things. Steve Wozniak, for example, was a hacker. We're not talking about bad people here. The bad guys are known as crackers. These are the hackers who have turned towards the dark side. They have turned evil. They use their skills and their knowledge for the powers of bad to hurt others. So those are two terms. Now again, we've said this before in previous videos, just because you know the difference doesn't mean that people won't steal a bunch of money if you correct them. So the media, the news, they all call hackers the bad things, but believe me, they're not the same, same thing here. Finally, we have a third group called script kitties. These are the wannabes. These are the ones who want to be the bad guys. They typically have little to no skill in hacking. What happens here is they find pre-existing software tools um, on how to take down networks, how to crack into things, and they run those tools. So they're not actually coding their own tools. They're using other people's stuff. And being called a script kitty is not a compliment. It's, in fact, considered an insult. So now that we have a general idea of who's who, let's talk about hardening the computer. When you buy a computer, computer right out of the box is a gorgeous thing. I mean, oh, the smell, the sights, it's wonderful, a brand new computer, but it's got issues. The computer has security vulnerabilities, and every computer when you buy it has vulnerabilities. Hardening the computer is about making the computer harder to break into harder to attack. It's kind of like a home. If you leave the windows wide open and the door is unlocked, anybody can get in. So you harden the house, you lock the windows, you lock the doors, you put alarm systems on, you um, put things on, let's say, a glass door, an extra bar. So you're making the home harder to break into. Same thing with the computer. You're hardening the computer. For home use, this typically means that you're going to make sure your computer is up to date, you're running some sort of anti-malware software, antivirus, anti-spyware. You're going to add a firewall and, of course, use common sense. And we'll talk all about common sense when we take a look at social engineering. The first thing I would say in protecting your computer is making sure your computer is up to date. Make sure you have your automatic updates turned on. This goes for both PC as well as Mac. What occurs is that people discover security vulnerabilities, flaws, holes in programming, and they release updates, they release patches. These patches, these updates, are put into these updates. And so with Windows, you update your computer, it closes some of those holes. Mac, same thing. If you have an iPad, if you have a phone, they release updates. Make sure your stuff is updated. Lots of malware takes advantage of people whose computers are out of date. Case in point, one of the more malicious worms that have ever showed up was known as the blaster worm, otherwise known as the W32 blaster. This came out in August 2003. Now pay attention to this. This was released into the wild in August. Microsoft had recognized that there was a vulnerability. They were like, this is a hole. This is a security problem. They released the patch back in July. If people had the patch on their computer, the worm couldn't have hurt them, couldn't have infected them. It would have just went, can't hit you, you're protected. So the patch was released back in July. The worm was released in August. Look how many computers it took down. The first two days, over 180 computers in the first two days 400,000 and more within a week. 
the reported cost in general was about $320 million. Now, I remember the blast room very specifically because I was working on the tech bench at Best Buy. This was before they acquired the Geek Squad. And I remember coming in in August and it was like Christmas. It was as crazy as a rush as Black Friday shopping, as the Christmas rush season was. It was crazy. We had people lined up out the door. And no exaggeration here. People lined up out the door for the computer tech department, for the tech bench. And they all had the blast room on their, on their computer. We had computers stacked up on top of each other in the back room. The fix was fairly quick. All you had to do was run a blaster removal tool and update the computer and you were good. It cost about 50, 60 bucks to take care of. All because people didn't update their computer. So make sure your computers are up to date. That's step one in protecting against the bad stuff. The next one is malware protection. Again, like I said, we're going to have an entire video on malware. Right now, just know that you need antivirus software on your computer. More importantly, make sure it's also updated. One of the questions I always asked when I was working on the tech bench as well as my own computer shop was not, do you have antivirus software? Because the answer was always yes. Antivirus software always, always comes on new computers. It's always a trial version. So after three months, after six months, your trial has expired. You don't have antivirus software anymore. And so by asking, when was the last time you updated it? If I got the look of, then I knew you weren't protected. So antivirus software, anti-malware software does you no good unless it's up to date. The next one is a firewall. A firewall can be hardware or software. Basically what a firewall does is it monitors traffic going into and out of your computer. It looks for suspicious activity. So, for example, it's just like a house. You don't want people coming in and out of your windows. You want people coming in and out of your front door, maybe your back door. Or maybe you don't want your back door being used, you want the front door being used. And so you lock down the windows, you lock down doors, you lock down different methods of getting into and out of the house. That's what a firewall does. It closes what we call ports, openings, into and out of the computer. Mac and Windows computers all have built-in software firewalls. This wasn't always the case. Windows did not always have a built-in firewall. Now they do. Your wireless router also provides some firewall protection. You can buy routers that have, and they advertise that they have firewall protection, but most of your basic routers have some level of firewall protection. Again, if you want more, go buy a router that specifically advertises it. You can also get third-party programs that provide firewall protection, software firewall protection. I would say this. Be careful on your software. Research your software before you buy it. A company, which will remain nameless because they don't want to get sued, created such a craptastic internet security thing that it. To, to, the reason why it worked was because it shut your computer down. You couldn't do anything on your computer. And so all the techs, you would see it, you would just remove it because it was it was it crippled the computer and it costs it was like 50, 60 bucks for the person to buy. And then we had to take it off. It was kind of kind of sad. Other things to be aware of that you should be uh, should look at are your user account control settings. You don't want users on your even on your home computer accessing things you don't want to access. Some security experts say that you should make, should make an administrative account and then don't use it. Create a limited account and use that for your daily activities. That way, if you get any viruses, it's harder to have them infect your computer. Parental controls, if you have children, you want to look at parental controls. You can block websites. You can set times that they can use the computer as well as when it shuts them off. Browser security settings. Browsers have security settings that you can put on. You can block certain programs from running. Um, again, I would recommend, I think I talked about this in previous videos, I would avoid Internet Explorer personally. I'm a Chrome fan. I also like Firefox, so be sure to check those out. And our next video, we've talked about it, we've hinted about it. Now we're going to get there. We're going to take a look at malware. <laughs>